G'day guys and welcome back. I'm going to do a small video on uh, servicing your um, egg beater reels. I used these um, Sedona reels on the beach the other day and I got some salt water on them and all that. I do wash the salt water off when I get home but there are scales stuck to it and, and, and it's time for a bit of an oil change on them as well. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'll take you through the process of doing that. It's only going to be a short video because really there's not that much involved in them. But um, it might be something that you don't really know and you just go ahead and wash them down and never oil them. But there, there are signs that uh, you can see that when the reel needs oiling. That's the first place there where um, cops are beating because you can get sand in there in the, in the handle and, um, and it's quite easy to clean it out and oil it. So I'll show you how to do all that. We'll go through the process of taking the handle off and you take the spool off and just dropping a, a few drops of oil in it. So um, the first, th first thing to do is to wash your wirral because sometimes you do end up getting scales on your handles and, and, and all that if you're using bait. So uh, we'll do that first and then I'll continue on showing you how to uh, oil the reel. Well here we are washing the reel. What I use is a old toothbrush with uh, dishwashing liquid and that uh, gets in the nooks and crannies and seems to do the job really well. I normally put the reel outside in the sun to dry but because it's raining outside I'm just using the hair dryer on this one. Alright, a few things uh, we need is obviously some oil, that's light machine oil, light sewing machine oil. And I also have a small screwdriver, it could be a flathead or um, just a Phillips head. Whatever you got handy, usually it's a, a small flathead will do the job. Uh, mainly gonna, I'm going to clean these uh, Sedona reels, but I also want to clean my uh, blackfish reel as well because uh, it's getting to be blackfish season and uh, I want it running properly. It's pretty good now, but um, you can see it's got a bit of sand on it. You can hear it too. All right, so first things first, we'll do this uh, egg beater reel and take the spool off it. That's what I normally do first up because you don't want to get oil on your braid or, or fishing line. You definitely don't want to do that. All right, uh, second thing is uh, I take the handle off and that you just do that by unscrewing that there. I'm right-handed, but um, some people are left-handed. You can you can put it vice versa. Interchangeable. All right, just screw that off like so, and uh, and pull that out. Now, what I'll do is I'll service this first. What we're going to do is uh, put a little bit of uh, oil in there and it doesn't require much. It's just, I don't know if you can make that out. There's two little screws there. You take them out and that's a little cap that you flip open. So uh, we'll do that now and, and put a bit of oil in there. You need a tiny screwdriver. I find that these little uh, electrician uh, screwdrivers, a tiny little one, flat ones, work the best. So take them out and be mindful, don't lose these screws, they're tiny. Alright, well there you go, the, the caps come away with a screw. And that was easy enough. Now, I'm not too sure if you can make that out. There is a screw in there. And uh, you can take that screw out and grease the whole lot up. But because this is a new reel, 
it doesn't require me to take it out. All I'm going to do is just put a tiny bit of oil inside there. It will work its way in the handle, like so. Just give it a spin, a few, few more spins like that. Let it work its way in. And a little bit more on this side. I mean, it, it's not that hard unscrewing that screw and putting the wall in there, yeah, but I don't need to. So that's much better now, much better. Give, you, give it a few spins. And you can see that, that's, that the oil's just gone right through there. Beautiful. And wipe the excess off. Because you really don't want to get oil on your fingers when you're baiting up. Because what happens is the, the oil will go through your bait and all that. And if the fish detect that there is a slightest amount of smell of oil on your bait, you will not get a bite whatsoever. Believe me, that, that goes for WD-40 or Enox, any spray like that, oil sprays. Don't get it on your hands. If you do, wash your hands with soap because once you start dealing with bait or your soft plastic lures and stuff like that, if you get that smell on your lures, forget about catching fish. That's a little tip there. Anyway, that's done. Beautiful. Also, I, I like to lubricate that there because what happens is because you don't really use it and you lock it in, you always got it like that. When you do want to use it, what happens is that it will get stuck there and corrode on there. So you'll never be able to use it. See, that's designed there so you can actually fold the, the handle in for storage. So it doesn't stick out. Anyway, so what I do is just put that little dog of uh, oil in there. That's absolutely beautiful. And that's what you want. You wipe the excess off. Done. Now the rule. There, there's no need to pull it apart because like I said, it's, it's pretty much a new rule. But it does need a little bit of lubrication on the inside. Uh, so what I do is I just put a little bit, a couple of drops of oil inside where the handle goes there. Not inside the, where the handle goes, but actually on the outside of that. And just give it a spin like that. And let the oil work its way through. Also, I'll do a little bit on the other side. I love this little oil can. Real old oil can. I love it. Anyway, the old things are always the best things, I reckon. Uh, and you just do that. So you can see now it, it, it's really running smooth. But there's one more step to do. Turn it until the shaft is all the way out and put a couple of drops on that shaft. That's it. A couple of drops on that shaft. A few turns. Look how nice that's turning. That's fantastic. And that's pretty much it for these rules anyway. Uh, because they're new, like I said, you don't have to go and pull them all apart. I used to before with my older rules and grease them and, and oil them, but you don't have to do that. All you have to do with these rules is just put a couple of drops of oil like that on your handle and inside here, and uh, this the job's done. So now just put it all back together again, and it'll work a treat. A long thread that. All right. So we got the handle working fantastic. Just you want the excess off there. Got that working great. Bail arm's pretty good. I know the bail arm's good. I 
that's a good reel. All that's left is just put the put the spool back on. And job's done. And now when you store your reels, an old a lesson that I've known for many years. I know that the washer materials in the drags are different to these days. I mean, the olden days used to have leather, but I don't tighten the drag. When I when I store the reel, I don't tighten the drag up. I just let it loose like that. And when you get on site, pre pre tighten it for the drag setting that you want. Done. And that's uh, that reel there there now is service, and it'll last quite a few few uh, weeks nor, or months if you don't use it. The more you use it, the more you'll have to service it, obviously. Okay, so it's the same process with all the rest of them. Doesn't matter what size they are, same deal. So I'll get to them later. Now, this blackfish reel, center pin reel, is the easiest reel to uh, service because it's just got one center pin in the, in the middle and, and that's pretty much it. So what you do is you just unscrew that like that, pop it out and that's all there is to it. Um, the simplicity of, of this reel is uh, fantastic. So you just get rid of the little bit loose sand there and that if you got it. Really you should wash it down you know like I did with that other reel but I won't bother with this one at the moment because uh, what happens is with these reels you're burling up with weed and sand so that sand tends to work its way into these reels so you really have to look after I, I serviced these before so there's no need to take them off so what you do with these ones is you just take them off with a flat edge screwdriver pull them out grease them up instead of oil or put, put a bit of grease in there and uh, they're ready to go but always be mindful that these reels sort of when you're burling up uh, you get sand in them and they do need to be serviced on a regular basis but um, and there's no uh, there's nothing hard about it as you can see there's only one shaft there so all I do is just a bit of oil up there and then just put it back on Bit hard to start the thread on that one. <laughs> well, they work fantastic, don't they? They're good rules. And that's all you have to do with that one. Later stage, I'll, I'll get around to servicing some of the uh, some of these rules that I have here. Now these ones, this one's a different story altogether, but I, don't, I rarely use these. Well, you can see it's, it's gathered dust. I've had it on the shelf for a little while. Um, unless I go live baiting or do something like that, I don't use that at all. It's fantastic reel. An Atlas lever drag. An Atlas LED 30 from Rovex. I don't know. It's the first time I had a Rovex reel, but they're fantastic reels. And I also just back the drag off, just leave it like that. And these ones too, these ones here I used to use outside. Um, and, uh, and they're great reels, they're old. Um, this one's a pen squitter. Made in the USA. Fantastic reels. I've got around about three of these. And um, from Philadelphia. No, I don't know where, where that is. Pen Fishing Tackle. Manufactured Philadelphia. I don't know. Anyway, they're great reels. And I, don't, I can't remember how I come across this one. It's been so many years since I've had it. Yeah. Anyway, so I'll show you how to do these at a later stage when I come across it. And guess what? I forgot to put this on. <laughs> anyway, don't worry. I'm sure some of you would have said, oh, 
I better write in and tell him that he forgot to put that on before he goes and uses it. Or maybe, yeah. No, don't worry, I, it was on the table so I wasn't going to miss it. Anyway guys, <laughs> thank you for uh, subscribing, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give me the thumbs up. And uh, yeah, I will catch you on my next video. Till then.